Right, well, I think we're uh, up and streaming again. That was a bit of a false start. Uh, let's just hope it stays up. I've actually reset the, uh, the internet modem as well. The uh, cable router. Hopefully that should sort things out. That was kind of weird. I mean, it died a death. It's like suddenly said, what, you want to stream? <coughs> and spluttered and died. Anyhow, what was I saying? Um, hmm. Uh, let me just say I'm streaming again. Just let everyone know. Just do an audio test. Hopefully my levels are okay. They look okay from this end. Streaming rate is still up, which is good. I do even have a little tea left, not much. Audio is fine, says Laurie. Thank you, Laurie. Apologises, everyone. Apologies, everyone. I don't quite know why it died to death then. I think I must have caught the, uh, the modem off guard. Ah, oh, right. So what was I saying? Oh, yes, I may have COVID. Um, I've had a lump in my throat, then a sore throat, dry cough, lots of sniffing and things. Although I've still got my smell, which is a good sign. But um, just in case, because we're meant to be visiting folks over uh, Xmas, uh, in-laws, figured I'd better get tested. So this afternoon I uh, trundled along to the... Um, drive through um, what do you call it drive through test centers uh, but I won't know until they say 24 to 48 hours so I won't know until tomorrow but um, depending on that that will decide whether um, we will go and see the in-laws or not as you can imagine um, I do feel slightly downhill here I've lowered my seat slightly But anyhow, I feel okay. Uh, any effects that I've got at the moment are mild. So I'm hoping it's just a cold or something. But we will see. I mean, I'm being fully boosted, so. I haven't really been anywhere to pick it up either, which is ironic. So, how is everyone? Um, please make yourself known, by the way. Um, let's return to oh um, let's look at this first right so where were we yes let's do a review of where we were um, so I'm obviously wor working on the ice logic deck it's now up and running uh, I, I think I left that uh, with the prototype uh, thingy. So let me just switch over to this view. So um, what I can do is probably actually run the um, Let me just run the firmware if I can. Okay, that's the firmware running. You get the um, uh, 
need to go into the right directory here. Right, I'm just checking my local path here. Let me just send something. So the firm was up and running. Let me just give it a binary to um, two on. Yay, there we go. Uh, it's a bit bright, isn't it? I can actually reduce that slightly. Lowering the aperture on this. Right, so that's running in the middle tile now. So um, what I did was I actually, during writing the um, PCF file, I figured I'd test all the tiles. So. Um, this is the PCF file. So at the moment I'm plugged into, I've commented out everything in here apart from the current tile, which happens to be a super tile, but I'm only using the normal tile parts of it. Okay. So the way a tile is normally structured, if we look at this one, so this is a PCF file. Unfortunately, this editor doesn't recognize PCF, so. Um, it's not doing anything clever on the um, highlighting or anything. So on here, um, if these weren't commented out, these are all commented out at the moment because I'm not using them. I mean, what I can do is I can set this to, is it no worn? Uh, no. Um, Laurie, you probably know this, on the PCF file, if I don't want to be bothered by the pins I'm not using, can I use, is it no worn or something like that in the PCF file? Can you remember? I mean, is it something like set LED, is it like no worn? Something like that. Let me um, hold on. Put it to a size that you can actually see by the side. Is it no worn or something like that? But and do I put that after the set IO command? Like that. Is that the right way around? I forget. I'm just going to uncomment this and we'll see what happens when I do a make. Um, uh, no, hold on, let me just make that 12, just for a sec. So if I do make now. Yeah, seems to think that's okay. Um, also, I should let me just change the size of this, otherwise, you won't be able to see. What I'm doing here terminal. Get this right and then go. So we can see what's going on. So if I type 
make on here. Hopefully it shouldn't complain. Oh, oh, hold on. Um, hold your horses. Right, so I need to CP. Oh, where is it? Let's just go and pick up the examples. Um, Lines are um, examples, I think. Um, and I want to put that, where am I? I'm in HTML, so I'm right here. So, we just descend. Uh, where else are we going? Let's try it. And what I want to do is set for called nice logic, nice logic. Sorry, let me increase the size so you can see. I'm just editing the make file so it goes and picks it up. Make dot chip dot bin is up to date. Let me just update. Not right now because it doesn't double check the uh, PCF. Let me uh, remove chip dot bin. Let's issue that again. Seems to be okay. Right. Um, so yes. Yeah, so let me just change these. Hold on. Nice logic there. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to change. I'm going to do a search and replace here. Hold on. Um, search and replace. I think I do. Uh, replace. Okay, and then I'm going to renumber these. We need to think about whether this actually makes sense, but 
So if I say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, and tau 2 will be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Minute, should I do it this way? How do we do this? Um, do I want them all in one big array or do I want separate arrays? What do you reckon, Murray? What do you think is better, separate arrays or individual? One big array doesn't make much sense. Yes, but you could use a tile offset of 12. Um, but rather than different names. All right, let's undo that. Let's stick to individual numbers and let's just say in this selection let's just replace let's replace LED with uh, tile one for example. And then do the same for these. Oh, it's done it for all of them. That's very annoying. Anyhow, no, no, no. Two. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. There must be an easier way of doing this. <sighs> Hold on. Let's select this. Uh, replace tile. One with tile two, but only in selection. Tile three. Oh, fuck. That's weird. Thanks. Let me start on. And it's where we tile two, tile three, just tile four, isn't it? Right, so let's just go through this, just double check it's done it right. So tile one, the tile one, naught through to tile eleven. 
Okay, tile 2, it's tile 2 north through to tile 11, plus the additional ones here. Um, tile 3, it's tile 3, 0 through to tile 11, tile 4, 4 through to 4, 11, tile 5, 5 through to 11. Um, okay. Right, so that's all the tiles. Um, what else? I've also got the clock at the top as well, obviously. Um, then we've got the RX and TX pins, obviously. The hyper round pins. Uh, I need to come back to the hyper RAM. Changes in the board. I'll come back to that. Uh, the Q's Pi, which is the link between the FPGA and the um, STM32 Quad SPI event link. Um, that's QD0 to QD3, so it's a 4 bit data plus the clock select and the event request. Or device press, whatever you want to call that. Uh, the SPI general usage um, with the flash as well, and the mezzanine IOs. So there's four that go up to the mezzanine, one of which is the LED actually. Uh, I should probably just. Um, I should mark which one that is. I forget now come back to that so basically uh, yeah I think that's all of the um, files let me um, just checking my um, Changes to be committed. Nice logic deck. Mm -hmm. So it's added. Yeah, I've got a board file as well which we're going to look at next um, okay untracked modified the schematic and stuff has been modified as well so this is on the main um, ice logic repository ice logic deck repository not the black uh, not the black crab directory Laurie I can push it if you want to have a look do you want me to push it I better just let me get the um, legal files up to make sure that it all opens properly because I would hate that to be in a incorrect state yeah it seems to be okay so uh, let me just do a commit. Hold on on this first. Um, oh, that's weird. Oh, that's annoying. Um, I wonder if I can do... I wonder what happens if I commit at this level.
Uh, hold on. Can I push it from here? Commit direct. Commit directory. What happens if I don't include the circuit and board files? curious as to what this is going to do right have a look Laurie under the um, the main uh, ice logic Let me know if you can see the um, see the files. There should be a subdirectory called HDL. Yeah, cool. Um, in answer to your question, have you got the RGB LEDs yet? Uh, they're coming tomorrow, as are some more ice 40 chips that i've been waiting for Hurrah! i mean they're saying tomorrow we'll see because i've been waiting for the other ice 40 chips that'd be kind of cool um so that's the pcf file we'll move on and we'll do look at the um the board file as well in a in a sec. Um, just as an update, though, I mean, I had a lot of fun <laughs> messing around. What was doing my head in was remember uh, before I was talking about having to use um, this adapter thing that fits on the mezzanine in order to debug it. You can see what's hanging off the edge here. My old ST Link programmer. So I was trying to get around that because the trouble is with this board, because it's not a proper mezzanine board, it's actually a proto tile, an old version of 8 bit proto tile. Um, when I have that on the mezzanine, it interferes with three of the different tiles, mechanically interferes. And it was doing my head in. I couldn't work out how I could debug and test these, um, the different tiles with that on. So I had to find a way of um, of doing it. Now, luckily, uh, I think yesterday it was, uh, I received, where did I put them? I received a whole bunch of bits and bobs, actually. Let me show you what I received. Mind you, it's all over the place, so. Uh, I received the buttons, little buttons, which is kind of cool. I've received my LCD that I ordered, which I know you've got um, already. But more importantly, I received these. 
What are these? These are the little debug connectors. Um, that fit onto the ice logic board. Can you see? Interestingly, um, so I was having a lot of fun trying to get these to work yesterday. Unfortunately, I didn't have a converter from the 1.27 mil to 0 0.1 inch for my. Um, hold on, let's just switch back here for a sec. Well, you can't see the damn things. So this is a 1.27 pitch, and that goes in the ice logic board. Uh, it just fits in, but it interferes with the USB connector, the right hand one. So I'm going to have to shove that along. But I didn't have an adapter from that to the um, 0.1 pins of the 0.1 inch or 2.54 mil of the uh, ST link you know my clone ST link Chinese clone so I thought oh I must be able to get the um, the new ST link version 3 running now and if I can I can then then use this directly and I had loads and loads of fun getting that working but I did eventually get there I'm not using ProBar S at this point I'm still using Open OCD, by the way, before you get too excited. But uh, that enable, enables me to plug into the board um, with the uh, with the relevant. Um, let me just show you actually. What was that ping? In? Hopefully this won't completely break. show you the board anyhow so my ST link is currently plugged in by the ST, the ST link 3 is currently plugged in by that and I'm talking to it over open CD I did have some issues that I don't quite understand I had problems with the reset of all things um, so I'm now programming it using my new ST link using the 0. you know 0. 05 header um, which is nice so I was able to go and test all the tiles um, and they all do this they're all working perfectly which is good news so I didn't have any connection problems with that which was nice let me just check yeah I apologize for the drop out there it came back up there um, uh, Laurie saying I've not tried moving to Amaranth yet I've literally just installed it today I have not run anything at this point there may be some frame dropouts in a minute I see it going up and down a little um, so I was not sure if White Quark has finished converting things I think she's done most of them, but um, and I'm not sure the state of the board file from that Black Ice NX. Well, that's obviously not converted, but I think all you have to do is just convert the excuse me, just convert the import parts because they're now in the Amaranth rather than in Mygen space. Uh, I wonder if I can show you what's going on here. Let me open the aperture a bit more. So, You can see at the top there um, 
Hold on, let me just pull it down a bit more. So if you look at the top of the image there, I know there's a green tinge. Can you see that I've put the um, right angled debug connector in? And you can see the IDC cable coming in. So that's got a 14 pin on one end, which connects to the ST-Link version 3. And the uh, uh, 10 pin, you know, 1.27 mil, 0.05 inch pitch on this end, which plugs directly into the connector. Um, interestingly, I wonder if I can improve the. Um, focus slightly. All right, there we go. Um, interestingly, I messed up on the connector. I've got the rows round the wrong way. So in order to make it work, because it's a polarized connector, it's got a hole on one side, and the uh, IDC uh, female that comes in from the uh, ST link can only go in one way. So I had to cut a hole in the other side so I could turn it round because I messed up but it's good that I know that I can then correct that on the uh, schematic for the new one um, the other thing is I'm thinking of not using this right hand polarized connector because the width here interferes with the USB I can move it slightly over to one side buy myself a little room but it's still too close when you put the USB in so I'm going to use a non um, an unshrouded um, connector that buys me a little more room. Um, and what I will probably do is not solder it in. I know that sounds daft, but what I'm probably going to do is offset the pins slightly so that when you push it in, it stays in. At the moment, as I'm using it, I, this isn't soldered in. There's enough pressure there on the pins and the hole size that it holds, makes a good connection. So I'd be doing something similar, but with an unshrouded one. Yes, that means you could possibly get it the wrong way around, although the diagram here would show you which way around it goes. So um, that's probably the best compromise that enables you still to get the other USB connection in if you need to. Because remember that other USB connection is for power delivery for the tiles, um, which we've got to work on, um, and other possibilities. So I need to leave it up to make it available. I'm out of tea, folks. It's not good. Does that help, Nori? I know it's not a very good close up of it. I did try and um, pick it up and show you guys, but that means I've got to disconnect if I do that. But if that's good enough, I'll just move back over to um, what we need to work on. Let me know. Okay, cool. So, uh, we have our PCF file. Uh, I'll just double check we've got everything here. Tile 1. Tile 2, which is also the super tile. Do you understand what I'm talking about with the super tile? It's got the extra pins that are connected to the FPGA rather than the STM32. So these pins here are in addition. They're not part of the normal tile space. But we use them when we are doing things like um, double PMOD connector, for example. So tile 3, tile 4, tile 5. 
and that will work so I can move you know I can run this program and change which one I'm using um, if I build now it won't work of course because I'm using the old LED name and it should be a tile name but we can change that that once I remember let's just change that output and one it's currently tile two save that let's do a build actually Oh, we didn't like that. LED is implicitly. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm output that now hang on yeah that's running let me um bring that back so you guys can see it there we go let me just turn the light level down and that's just a bit bright cool yeah so uh, I haven't forgotten anything have I tiles uh, hyper rams in there but I haven't done anything with that yet I need to return to the question of the hyper ram because I'm going to make some changes but uh, Q spy is there that's not tested spy is not tested well the spy is tested in that we can program it over spy but it's not tested as in using it internally from the FPGA to the flash for example or you know an LCD or whatever it's driving uh, the mezzanine I have I have tried doing some blinkies over these I'm pretty sure those work so there's four IOs that go up the mezzanine there's also at the top here is the UART I think Ooh. Wait. Where's my UART? Oh, it's there. Let's just move that. That's all of the stuff, basically. All of the devices. Can you explain the measurement support the extra pin name? Uh, mezzanine we will come back to, but as far as the FPGA is concerned, at this point, the only things that go up from the FPGA are the UART pins. Um, and the uh, FPGA pins so it doesn't care where on the connector those are um, when we get to the board definition file that's different we do structure that in um, the let, let's deal with the tile too because you're asking about that so the second tile that is the center top of the, of the ice logic deck that that tile um, as well as the 12 IOs digital IOs that every other tile has um, that has the same as the other tiles it has an I squared C pair uh, a reserved one 
and it has the TR, which is tar request line. Normally, these these go back to the STM32 on all the other tiles. But on the super tile, I don't wire these to the STM32. I wire these to the FPGA instead. The reason for doing that is because I need 16 IOs, not 12 IOs, for a super tile. You know, the only super tile I've got at the moment is the double P mod, but that requires 16 IOs. Does that explain the super tile difference? So a super tile is backward compatible with a normal tile. The only difference is four of the pins that are normally connected to the STM32 are actually in addition connected to the FPGA. So it effectively has 16 uh, FPGA IOs on it rather than 12. That's just so it can support um, things like the double P mod. Um, and the reason I've called this here SDA and SCL and RSV is because that's what they're named on the PMOD connector. That's the positions they occupy, normally occupy the DSDM32 pins. So those names don't make much sense for the FPGA pins. No, they don't. But in terms of positions, they're quite important. So... Um, in most cases we're not using these you'd only use these if you had a super tile installed now if you have a super tile installed say for example you have a double the double p mod super tile which is the only super tile we have if you had that installed what you probably want to do is add into the pcf you know the pin constraint file you probably add a definition for the p mods effectively so you would lose this tile definition and you'd have a pmod definition the reason i haven't added this to the array is it's a bit confusing but i mean i could have tile 2 you know array element 12 13 14 and 50. But in truth, I'm not quite sure how to set this up. I've tried to keep the tiles standard in terms of their layout. So these ones are the exception. But if you can see numerically here, if you look at the comments, you can see how it maps to the PMOD pins. P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, P8, P9. P10, P11. Up to P14, 16, uh, up to P15. Um, so basically the P mod itself would be, that will be one P mod, one double P mod, P8 to P15. And this would be the other P mod, P0 to P7. So I think what you'd probably do is you'd, I'm not sure if you'd want to do that in the PCF file. Um, what you probably have is a Verilog file that did that, where you created two new PMOD uh, arrays that point to those respective pins that could then look just like PMOD arrays. If that helps. Sorry. I know it's a little bit complicated. It makes it less straightforward. But I thought it was nice to have the super tile capability then we could add, you know, the double P mod super tile in, which I haven't tested yet, by the way. Ta da! This one. Focus, focus, focus. Uh. OK, 
Okay. Are you happy with the PCF stuff, Laurie? Because well, I'll just move over to, and we can talk about the um, the board file. Let me just commit those changes, actually. Um, whilst I remember. Okay, I just committed those changes as well, by the way, now. Uh, so Laurie gets it. It's just happy for the moment. Needs some more thinking about and trying out. Yeah, I mean, it makes a difference when you go and start using it. It's a starting point. It's the start of the, uh, the evolution. Um... Right, shall we have a look at the um, board file now? Well, in fact, something I haven't added, I should add... Oh, I don't know whether to add that trail test. Maybe I'll wait for the moment. There's a whole bunch of files that aren't on there. So let's look at the... Uh, Let's have a look at the Let's have a look at the board definition file for Amaranth. Just to remind you, Amaranth is the new name for what was formerly called NMIGEN. So it's White Quark's new version. So I'm, 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 uh, I'm writing this with respect to the new version, not the old version. Um, so the first thing you notice is the imports. They're all from the Amaranth. Uh, the Amaranth namespace. Um, the name of this is the Ice Logic Deck Platform, obviously. Uh, this is a bit messy at the moment. So I've just created some strings here with the various pinouts. Um, the LED is currently on the RGB LED is connected to P7. Uh, the UART, so if you want to do Blinky, that's the one that you flash. The UART, obviously, similar equivalent to what we have in the PCF file. Um, and I go on and define these later, but these are just the pin definitions to make it easier for me to write them. Okay. Where you see a dash, most of these pins are not relative to the FPGA. They are normally connected power or um, um, STM32 pins. They are unknowns as far as the FPGA is concerned. Whereas these ones, I mean, basically use a string that's space delimited. Um, in order to, to group and define a set of pins. Okay, so 
if we have a look at what that turns into, the most obvious thing is the clock resource. So this is the input clock. So this comes from the STM32 into the FPGA. This provides a nice clock. And I know I've put it down here. This is what it should be. It should be the 25 megahertz clock. OK. And it goes into pin L5. Um, we call it clock 25 as a signal. Uh, it is also a global pin global input. Uh, that means it can be rooted around the FPGA a bit, a bit more. Um, the MX didn't have that. It was not a global pin. So that's a small difference. And the direction here, it's an input pin from the FPGA perspective. In terms of voltage level, it's just standard, you know, low voltage CMOS, 3.3 volt in this case. Um, also, the default clock domain for NMIGEN will use this. Uh, the package, which would be different if you were looking at the old ice core board that used to be a TQ144, is now a BG121 on the ice logic deck. Uh, the family is the same device. So that's the clock. Uh, there's an obvious resource for an LED. If we wanted to do a blink, that's on the LED pin, which I've defined up here, B7. Um, we also have SPI, so I've designed resources for the uh, SCK uh, master output serial in, CS master input serial out. I know that's the old fashioned naming. We could change those to, you know, um, what is it now? What's the way that we call this? Copy and Zipo. Is that right? So let's just correct that because that was a, just a copy and paste. Um, you can see obviously the directions. Um, so in this case, I'm defining it from the point of view of the FPGA. So this will be the clock will be an output I generated from within inside the uh, FPGA. Um, the you know controller out peripheral in. Um, so it's an output from the FPGA's perspective. That's a mistake. It shouldn't be zero. It should be zero. Oh. Uh, the chip select is an output again from the FPGA pin and the CPO is the input basically that's coming that's the data coming back in full duplex SPI from the peripheral itself these are all standard CMOS pins you know three volt three pins um, Q, the Q's Pi is our uh, data link between the STM32 and the um, FPGA, we have four bidirectional bits. Um, yeah, I think that's how you do. You just don't specify direction. I might need to NMIGEN uses CSN convention with automatic inversion. So, like, uh, you want to change it. Thus, or do you want to put pin invert in here? Can we have pin invert? Inverted equals true or something? I forget. Do I need to put inverted equals true or something in the pin definition as well? I forget, Laurie. Do I need to do something like uh, hold on. Uh, 
Uh, I wonder if it will prompt me actually. So if I was to have here, uh, comma, inver, invert, true. Do I need to include that as well? Let me see if I can find another one. Hold on. Let me go and have a look at one. At an old one. Let's look at. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at the icebreaker actually because I've got a local copy of the old MMIGEN board files here. So when he defines his spy flash resource, he puts CS, uh, Esden puts CS underscore M, but I don't see any pin inversion. He does use invert equals true for his button resources. And his LED results. So, for example, my LED resource here probably should have this because it's an active low. But I'm not sure if we need it here for this CS pin. When he defines, when they define their SPI, but they're not using a resource to do it. From the naming, okay, implied by that. Let's leave it out for the moment. I mean, I'm sure we'll find out at some point. Obviously, in the LED case, that's not, so it's probably worth having that in there. Okay, um, so back to the quad SPI. Sorry, QA, QSPY, uh, our event connection between the STM32 and the FPGA. So we've got four data lines, which I'm assuming that's the way to do bidirectional. Do I have to add anything extra to do bidirectional in my in uh, Amaranth? Can you remember um, nine? Um, I've just avoided putting directions here because obviously those are bidirectional. But in, in the case of the, uh, why's your finger around that? In the case of the quad SPI or Q, Q SPI E clock, that's an input to the FPGA, as is the Q SPI E select. Whereas the QDR, the, the event request, comes back out from the FPGA to the STM32, so that's actually an output. And again, I've got a zero there rather than it. Oh, which is really bad. What was I thinking? Oh, got pinged. Down with me. That. Right, I can't operate my phone. I keep wanting to edit my pictures, I don't really know that.
Um, so that's the Q spy. Oh, I should have a comma here. Look. Okay, good, good, good. Then we have the uh, UART. And that's really, I've just copied and pasted and changed the pin numbers. Uh, we've got RTS and CTS on there, which we don't have. It's a part of the copy and paste I don't need. And we have spy flash resources, which is just a repetition of what we had up here. I haven't done anything with the hyperram, and we need to talk about that. Don't need the comma here. Okay, so that's the normal resources. You're okay with all of those? RDII equals IO. Good point. Good point. I think you're right. That rings a bell. Um, My youngest. She's been boosted. It's adversely affected her. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the resources. Anything else on the resources, Laurie? Otherwise, I'll move on to the connectors. So, under the connectors, currently, what I have here is. So when I'm using the connector here, does the, does the fact that I call it tile make any difference? Or is that just a naming thing? Because normally they have PMOD there. Or is that special? I'm just going to have a look at if there's any others. None PMOD based. I mean, I'm, I'm, all, all, all I'm wondering is, do I need to, you know, define something called title, having put it there, or is it just a naming thing? Uh, and you can see more clearly here the pinouts here. So obviously, each of the tiles has an individual pinout. Then we have the generic pins, which are just underscores effectively, because they are um, STM32 pins and power supplies, etc. With the exception of uh, of tile two, which has some additional pins on there. And I'm just wondering actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. So that should actually be um like that. 
Oops. Again, these are the same width in terms of number of pins. Now, um, everything else is very similar to what we had before with um, uh, ice core and black ice, except there's no um, inheritance here between two things. It's, it's the entire thing in one. Uh, we will have to deal with this once more. Um, we did solve that last time for the um, ice thing, but I can't remember what we did with the... Uh, I think I did something weird like hold on. Oh, wait a minute, I know what I've forgotten. Let me just correct this. This actually does inherit from the Lattice Ice 40 platform. So we also need the um, import for that which was um, oh, good point, good point Okay, so what I did, what I was looking at maybe doing on the, what, what you, can okay, a bitstream file name, device. Device is that. Uh, was there a way of solving that on the command line? I'm trying to remember. I think I did something. I mean, you could have something so it it uh, passes in the port. So I think with Alloy, what I did was I did something weird, like rather than this, I had. Um, this equivalent where I added port. And you could add it in there, but we can come back to that part. But uh, we've got something more P more defined. Um, so the question is, yeah, just moving on to the connectors, Laurie. Um, I mean, does tile itself need to be defined, or is that just naming? That was what I was wondering. Do we need to define what a tile is? Um, so that's amaranth boards extensions p mod pi. I can have a look at that. Go with me, mate. Um, we can open that up. P mods. Amaranth Lang. Ew, I do not have Amaranth Lang. So, let me just
Um, can you tell me what the um, URL clone, the URL, URL is for cloning um, Amaranth Lang? Sorry. So I don't have the browser at the moment. I don't really want to. Um, hold on. I might be able to do it here. Is it underscore line? Hold on. Let me try and. Is it asking me for that? Hold on, just one second. Oh, why is it asking for bloody permission? So irritating. Hold me one second. For some reason, it's insisting on wanting to log me in. Didn't have to do that for the others. Oh, come on, now it stopped bloody working at all. Come on, come on. Damn it. Right, hold on. I think I've found that. Right, let me just do this again. Sorry, guys. This is really annoying. Let me see what I'm doing wrong here.
keeps asking for my um For some reason, right, hold on one second. This is really, really winding me up. Can you do me a favour, um, Laurie? Can you just go to the um, Amaranth Lang? And if you go to the code and then on, on, on the button, click for the code URL rather than the URL of the project. I just need to check something. For some reason, it keeps challenging me and asking for credentials. Wondering if I'm putting the uh, wonder if I'm putting the um, URL in wrong. I'm just trying to avoid running the browser here because I know I'm short of memory. I know it will slow all my crap down if I open all those tabs. I mean, maybe I can do this just temporarily. I'm going to cheat. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> no, 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 no. Why the hell is it? <sighs> My hours are. I do hate the um, Hold on. I think I've already got. It's kind of half. Um, wow. Yeah, it's trying to. Um, I think what's happening here, it's getting confused with my existing directories that I've installed. 
Let me just double check something. Hold on. So you've got Amaranth, Amaranth boards. Right. Okay. I don't think I need to do that. Right. So let's go back to where we were. Shit. It will be under here. Extensions. If I look under Amaranth boards, extensions, there's our P mod. That's a reasonable size. Uh, yeah, that I think I haven't really looked at this before. There, there are some kind of official pinouts for the PMOD standard that Digilent make a reference to in their uh, documentation. And I think somehow this um, this supports those. As you say, um, these are extensions were specific for PMODs. Yeah, so for example, here's a specific instance of an SPI type PMOD. If you were going to make an SPI peripheral that was compatible with the Digilent SPI standard, then this would produce, you know, the equivalent resource. Yeah, very clever. I've never used these before, so I don't know. So what you're looking at there, icebreaker bit C, line 37 to 41. And there's also the standard pinout for a UART on a PMOD there. Well, there's different standard PMODs. <laughs> yes, why have one standard when you can have many? There's lots of different types of UART versions. Oh my God. Another good reason not to use P mods or the extended standards. Anyhow, so yeah, we're probably not going to be using that. I'm going to get rid of that. So, what were you telling me to look at? The icebreaker bit C. Uh, icebreaker bit C. No, wait a minute. I can look at it. Hopefully, these have been transposed to um, the new um, Amaranth versions. So what were you saying lines 36 to 40 yeah so let me just um, let's just kind of zoom in visible. so you're talking about here so they make one called edge is that the one that you're referring to but have they defined edge anywhere I think so. I don't quite get what he's doing there. What the hell does that run? Where's the P mod? Con equals edge. Right.
these are just numbered connections from 0 to 23 and the pins that they're connected to, I'm guessing. <laughs> Laurie says, I've never fully understood this stuff. <laughs> Likewise, mate, I don't... I, 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 I don't quite understand what the hell's going on with that. Anyhow, let's go back to ours. So here I'm just using, you know, the tile definition. Question is, does this definition do what we originally were talking about? I don't think it does. Um... Let me just reply to this message. Please excuse my rudeness. People keep texting me. They want to know what the result of my test was, which I won't know for 24 to 48 hours. So, um, Yes, so one of the things that we were thinking about was, or one of the things that you were saying is, can we generically replace one tile with another I think that's just a case of you know using the num numeral to um, to differentiate so when we call tile naught so I think is there a good usage pattern uh, a usage example I don't know if we can write something that will work in M margin, that would be fun. Should we try that? Um, uh, hydrate. So what we could do is we could write a little uh, MyGen example. Bear with me a sec. I'm just going to mute and grab some more water. Okay.
I'll put the mic back in a minute. I'm just having some sugar. I haven't had anything to eat this evening yet. It's a stupid test. I even get a test receipt card. Look. I'm not going to show you the barcode. Just in case that gives anything away. That's better. I needed some some sugars. Um, I see I post is watching. Um. Uh, what Laurie was saying is um, we could try starting with the blinky example and then perhaps see what you get. Well, I was kind of thinking that, but I think it's built in. I'm just trying to remember how it works, um, Laurie. So if you look down here at the platform fire, you've got this. How do I run this? Because it looks like it's built in as a test. That does a build, it doesn't. Yeah, and it does a program. How do I run that? Do I just do you use Python? Hold on. What happens if I go to... I'm making an awful lot of assumptions here. Uh, can I just go... Python... I, I think it, it defaults to that anyhow. Uh, Python Can I just run it like that? What happens if I do that? Module not found. No module named Amaranth. Uh I thought I installed this. No module named Amaranth. Why isn't it finding Amaranth? I'm sure I used, I did the pip install. Um, hold on. Holdy, 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 holdy. I think I installed using pip3 yeah 
Um, I wonder if I need a new terminal. Does that make any difference? Query pip free. Wait a minute, there may be another way of doing this. Hold on. if I do this that's an interesting error uh, because the IDE um, the reason I'm doing this is because I have the um, Amaranth source files added to my Python root as libraries. So when I try and run that from within the IDE, I seem to get a bit further, but it, it, it then, wait a minute, what's this it's saying? It doesn't like the relative import. No known parent package. Uh, oh, is it this? Is this what I'm looking for? What do I do that? Oh, it's because this isn't part of a package. Is it Amaranth Borg? Where is Blinky, did you say? Let me have a look. Um, test. Utils? No. There isn't a blinky. Maybe it's boards. Test. Dot Linky. I'm just going to comment this out because normally this sits in a board directory. But in our case, it's not. So let me just um, get rid of that. What happens if I try and run this again? Oh, now it's got other shit. Name error. Oh. Okay, so it's picking up a mistake with my file here. That's good. I don't know if you can read this, guys. Try to add connector mes4, blah, 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 blah. But connector mes4 has the same name and number. That should be connector mes0. 
on one basically so let's just do that again so and another thing now uh, raised tool not found could not find the required tool in path yes. Yosis. Okay, let's just go back a level. Let's just do what um, I was trying to do initially. Um, um, pip three. Is it minus minus list? Or is it just list? There's probably going to be a crap load of stuff in here. Right at the start. Alphabetically. No, there is no amaranth. What? Oh! You know why, don't you? I'm being a dick. I'm running Windows Subsystem for Linux and not DOS. I've installed it. Sorry, not not Windows. So okay, so let me um bear with me. I know how to fix this. So I'm just being a wazuk basically. I'm confusing myself. It's what happens when you try and run too many things at once. So I installed I installed it in PowerShell, but for Windows, but not um, not here. This would be quite cool because I'll be able to run it in both. Error in my gym. 0.2 has a requirement for Pi VCD 0.14, but you'll have but you'll have Pi CD 0.2.4, which is incompatible. Right. That's not good. Hold on. Oh, what joy! Don't you just love Python? It's there now. Look, that's good. Uh, whether it'll work or not is another question. Let's try running it manually. Oh, do I have to manually install that shit? Um, Is that right? Oh, hold on. get the information about when did it let in properties
Mm. Annoying. Is it called amaranth balls? Got kit. I don't want to use a name. No. Maybe it's uh... no. Hold on. Hold on, I know what I'm going to do here. Okay, that should have the board stuff installed. Okay, that seems to have um, reprogrammed the board, which is what we want. Trouble is, because I don't have the LED installed. I can't bloody see it. So let me just improvise temporarily. Did it use LED? I presume it used LED. So if I set the LED pin to something else um, here, just temporarily, um, currently something on tile two like that, which is where I have my LEDs. Yay, we have flashing LED. Yeah, I, sorry, Laurie, I wasn't following what you've been saying there. You're talking about manually uh, running Blinky. 
Uh, all I was trying to do is, when you design these platform files, you put a default test in there, which runs the default Blinky, which assumes the name LED, and it blinks it. If you've called it LED, the resource LED. Um, the re you can't do this in the way that they've written it because this isn't installed in the boards package. So I've had to manually do that here. But basically that's what it does. This tests the, um, basically tests that we're receiving the clock input and we're outputting the LED. So yeah, what it's doing is it's running <coughs> Um, this, which is built into Amaranth. Uh, so it looks for RGB LEDs, it looks for an LEDs array obviously, or just an LED resource. Probably does something fancy if there's RGB, which I don't have in this case. Um, buttons, switches, and then what does it do? So it takes a default clock frequency, an input clock, creates a timer, uh, what the hell is it doing, this timer thing? Is this flops to the power of cat inverts? That's funny. He's having, she's having a laugh. Um, MD sync timer reset flops. Flops. Inverts. Where does inverts come from? Anyhow, yeah, it's a very complicated way of doing uh, blink that obviously caters for any number of different or combination of resources that may or may not be called LEDs. But it works, look. Although I've changed the uh, the default pin, obviously. Purely because I don't have an LED installed on the um, on the ice logic deck because I'm missing my um, the right sized LED which is hopefully coming tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to bother soldering that on in time. So um, we have something that now works uh, and obviously I'd like to say it compiled but that's not really right. It um, synthesizes okay and runs blinky. I mean, that isn't testing any of this other stuff, of course. Um, it's just testing the LED pin, i.e. me setting this here manually. We'd have to write something a bit more sophisticated to test the tires.
So, uh, Laurie's saying we need to check whether we can use your LED, your 12 LED tile in any position by just changing the connector number. Um, yeah, we could write a test version of that. Um, let's just see what we've we got here. So, what is the time? 918. We're doing okay for time. Uh, let's so I've got the uh, Verilog version of trail here so let's do a um, hmm. it's not under example this should really be under a test directory this if I put this under a test directory, is Python going to do something horribly ma magical? Um, I hope not. Mm. I'm just going to, I'm purposely going to call it something slightly different just in case. I don't want. Um, To invoke proper Python tests. New Python file. Um, so what we want to do is uh, tile test. So I was saying, um, so you would need a tile resource a bit like the one we use for the LED resources. Oh, you just made me click on a browser link. <laughs> it's opened it up. Oh. Fuck. Fuck. Right. Right, 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 right. Let me just um just do something here then let's get the basics let's do a bit of copy and paste and let's just do um, that first so we need these and we're also going to need But might have to come back to that. Moment. I mean, I need what I'm just trying to remember. It's a long time since I've written any of this. Uh, what do I need? I need um,
All right, stand twenty. Just start with something basic before I do the tile, just to make sure this is working actually. for LEDs isn't it? I think I don't need that, I just need oh wait a minute, do I? I haven't defined these shit. Um I need to define the resource first. Oh thanks um Lorry, that will just save me typing in some stuff. The, uh, oh yeah. Right, let's get this working first then. Um, platform build LED, so we need to call it time test of this list. Um, this won't see the board file, will it? And how do I do dot slash? Dot dot H. How do you do it in Python? Is it like that? Can you do a relative import like that? How do you do the relative imports? I don't know how to do the relative imports. So that expects it to be at the same level.
Is that why you do it? Why did I get there before then? That's why I'm going to HDL. Oh, I spelt it wrong. Oh my god. It's got a capital E. Anyhow. Uh, so, hyphen. What did I call it? Tile test. Oh, it's not finding the ice logic deck. So it's all right in the IDE, but not there. That needs to be relative. Can we do that? Not sure. I've never used the relative things in Python before. No. How do you do a relative import from a directory above? Damn it. Um, let me just quickly look it up. Hold on.
Uh, I think you can use dot dot. Do you mean you haven't used relative imports, Laurie? That should mean directory above. Mark directory is a new place. Uh, what did I do there? Import attempted relative import with no known parent package. Ow, oh, it doesn't like it if there's no package. Because it's just a file. The board's file. I mean, what I could do is maybe I could replicate it for the test. What happens if I do a symbolic link? Let's just do a copy for the moment. Just to solve this problem. I know we shouldn't do this. We're going to confuse our fucking selves. There you go. Save that. What was if I run this now? Ah, God. Right, hold on. This is bugging me, let me just sort this out. How do I make this package? Um, right. Oh. 
cool tile. Do I need to put something in the init.py file, like a name or something? Yeah. Maybe I need to change into the... Um Maybe I just get rid of that. It's in the same package. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's fucking doing my head in. This really is. HTL underscore test. Hmm. Why is it objecting to that? We're looking at this one now. Module not found. No module found. HDL test. I do not understand. if I lose this entirely. Ah, oh, that's better. Ooh, right. Hold on. Tar test align anything. That's what I had a problem with. And that build resource error. LED1 does not exist. Um, Ice logic deck LED. I've probably not numbered it. I've called it zero. Right. Okay. So we're looking for one, and we should be looking for zero. So wait a minute. Is this expecting more than one LED? Does I not include zero in this case? Oh, and what happens if I change this to one? has range four. So isn't that one two four? You can't find one. Oh, I'm changing the original, not the copied version. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna really bloody confuse myself. I'm not careful. Now that I've got two versions of this board.
LED naught does not exist. What? Range 4 is 0 to 3, but it's not finding any of them. Does it have to find four of them, Nori? Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. That's looking better. Okay, we're good. We have LED flashings. Right, so let's do the tile stuff then. So what you what you were saying for the uh, tile stuff was... Um, <laughs> We go back to your original um, example. So you created a resource. LED sixteen. What happens to so these aren't resources, so I can't do it this way. Hold on, I need to zoom in here, otherwise you can't see what's going on. So I can't do this uh, request trick, because normally I'd request a tile. That example is using two times eight LED P mods. You're creating those on the fly, those resources. Okay, so um, uh, you're saying here LEDs eight to one. Don't I just need LEDs twelve or something? Why do I need to create a resource? The resource already exists. Are you creating a resource from a connector? Can't I use the connector? So in here, um, Laurie, you know we're doing a um, platform request 
for these items in this case you enumerate them so if I take you've actually created these resources dynamically I wasn't going to create a resource because it's already defined in the um, in the um, ice logic deck board file so you're saying sub signal why do you need to create this all right you always have to create a resource so can I get rid of So the sub signal here pins. Should that go to? Why have you got that funny order? Shouldn't they be numerically in order? One, two, three, four. Is that the position of the pins? I do. No. Uh, Oh, it's because I got the definition wrong. Okay, fair enough. Um, should be 1 to 12. Well, I've done 1 to 12, look. Um, so here, LED, where do I get that from? So, cat L, LED's 12. that be like that Uh, 
resource is not defined. Resource is not defined. I need an import. Um, that's from. Hold on. Build. Resource LEDs 12 naught does not exist. LEDs 12. Yes. There we go. Let's see what happens. Now it's flashing. Just check on here. What did I do for the tiles? Oh, it should be tile one, not tile two, because I start from naught. Maybe I should renumber these. There we go. It's counting up. Need Enmigen board or Amaranth board. Have a look at build slash top PCF. Why do I need to look at that? Where is that? Under after what it's built. That one. That looks like the, um, yeah, that's the previous one. Um, we need to go down into this build, don't we? Being a twat. I got there in the end. I was just being a div. Hydration time. Still counting. Got there, yeah. That was very painfully slow. Sorry, that was because I do find this rather strange having to do that. So, you think that the tile definition does what you anticipated? It doesn't look very convenient to me, but there you go. That looked bloody awkward, in fact. Isn't there a nicer way of doing that? It just seems... It just seems to suck. So, I mean, if... Basically, now, if I wanted to use a different position, 
Uh, I'd moved the LED proto tile, obviously, and then I changed this number here. So if I'd moved it into position one, I'd put one there. If I'd moved it into position three, I'd put three there. Yeah. Makes more sense when the tile has many different pins. Well, it's already got 12 plus, you know, plus the STM stuff. So what you're saying is from a maintenance point of view, you can just change this here and it will deal with it. I guess it just it just always strikes me as awkward. But yeah. I've got to work out this relative things. Um I mean, once I settle the PC, uh, the board file, I can commit it, do a fork of Amaranth, commit it to the board's file, and then send a pull request to uh, White Quark. Um, I'm not going to do that now because I know I'm going to change it significantly between now and when I want it to be um, more public. But trying to incorporate that board file is a bit of a pain unless you actually include it in the package. Or, or we have a package name under HDL or some such. I need to figure out the structure of that a little bit. But as you say, it is now working, which is good, albeit somewhat slowly. That count. need to add black ice mx to that fork too and correct that yeah i need to work out what that correction is of course okay so i found a couple of things on the board that i'm going to change i don't know if we're ready for this conversation yet have we finished with the uh, board file Or is there something else that you need to, um, that you'd like to um, point out, add, or whatever? Sorry, on the board file front. Right, board file done. Yeah, so. If you remember, uh, on the ICE logic board, um, I've got HyperRAM on the board. I'm taking that off, controversial as it sounds. I'm not getting rid of it, but what I'm doing is I'm adding that to the mezzanine board, I'm making it an option. My reasoning is as follows. Lots of the people I've talked to don't use any of the memory on Black Ice MX. It's a very, very small percentage of people that actually use the memory. But it burdens the price quite significantly. And there's a price point that I'd like to hit. So uh, what I'm going to do is not include on the shipping version the HyperRAM on there, but have the HyperRAM and mezzanine board. That way, if people don't want it, they don't have to have it. And they don't get adversely um, hit cost-wise. Also, the supply issues with the hyperam. So um, separating that out just makes it easier. The functionality will still be the same. Um, so that's one of the other decisions I've made. 
The other advantage that gives us is we can also do a mezzanine board that doesn't just have the hyper RAM but can optionally have hyper flash as well. Not only that, but we'll be able to do different size hyper RAMs, um, which will give me more flexibility in terms of sourcing and stuff, which is a real, real nightmare right now. So we can do different mezzanine boards that have different um, uh, amounts of hyper RAM. Um, you could actually, with, with, with the new design version where it's on the mezzanine board, you could actually do what um, Esden did with these P mods. So on a mezzanine board, you could actually add several hyper RAM chips um, because I've got the extra four pins to the selects. So you could actually do uh, four hyper RAMs or even five hyper RAMs, but probably four is better. Pity we couldn't have an SD RAM option. Yeah, that, the trouble is with SD-RAM, you need like 40-odd pins. And there's no way you're going to do all the tiles and the SD-RAM. When we do the ECP-5 um, logic deck, that will have the DDR2 on board. Because there's no way I'm pinning out 40 odd pins. Say with a super mezzanine tile, but you can't because the number of pins you need is like, I think it's like 40 or something stupid. How are you going to get 40 pins without sacrificing a tile? Um, you've got. What we'll have, let me let me just do a quick fag packet math, right? If you did the super tile in the mezzanine, you'd have 16 plus 11, so it's 27, plus 4, that's 31. You still got nowhere near enough for SD RAM. I think you need 40 for SD RAM. If I remember rightly. Hold on, I'll tell you. I had a file open here. So if I look at the MX, uh, sorry, the ice core board file, you've got the DMQs, you've got two DMQ boards. This is, you, you normally have BA. Uh, lines as well. Uh, then address lines you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 address files plus 16 data pins, 12 plus 16, uh, that's 28, 29, 30, then you need your clock, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. I think the minimum you can do, so if you did the same as the ice core, which has no B no banks, zero banks, it's a two meg SD RAM, then you'd need 36 IOs. Let me just double check my math. One, two, three, 16, 20, yeah, you need a minimum of 36 pins and if you've got banks well then it's 36 plus you know the log of the banks log base two of the banks and with the mezzanine all you've got with the hyper ram is what have you got you've got 11 plus 4 is 
11 plus 4, 11 plus 4, it's 15, plus 16 on the hypertile, that's 29. Um, yeah, there's no way. Damn, my laptop's running hot. I nearly burnt myself. This thing does um, burn through the energy. So, um, yeah, it's not going to work, is it? Then this four, sixteen on the mezzanine, plus sixteen on the super tile. It's only 29 pins. Yeah, we're way short, mate. It's not going to work. I think you have that kind of luxury when you go to the ECP5. But, as I say, we're going to have DDR2 on the ECP5 anyhow. So. Um, this is... We're just going to stick with the Hyper RAM. I can't see any way of having uh, an ST RAM extension. And by the way, the SD RAM is really difficult to get as well. That's why I stopped building any new Black Ice MXs. Because I couldn't get the bloody chips. <sighs> On the plus side, with the Hyper RAM, is, you know, that mezzanine board. We could have different types of mezzanine board. We could have, you know four hyper ram chips if we wanted to and you can get 128 meg ones of those as well so you could have a whole crap ton of memory if you wanted to But yeah, you don't have a problem with me externalizing the Hyper RAM on the mezzanine. But I'd probably combine it with the um, LCD. So the default choice would be a Hyper RAM, 64 megabit Hyper RAM, 8 megabytes, plus the LCD. Or plus the LCD connector, you know, the LCD could be uh, optional. And then there could be higher memory versions as well. I mean, you could have a combination of um, Hyper RAM and Hyper Flash as well. You've got a lot more flexibility by putting it on the mezzanine, basically. It just provides more choice. It also protects us from the uh, supply issues, which are driving me absolutely insane at the moment. Uh, Laurie Griffin says, my issue is what can be done with Hyper RAM? Well, in many cases, people don't even use the external memory. It depends how you're, what you're writing. I mean, you'd use the Hyper RAM in a normal way. Um, you know, as a memory resource. There's lots of different ways you could use it, you know. But for retro, I agree. It's not good for retro. But then... You know, Ice Logic Deck isn't necessarily aimed at that, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if, if you're doing soft calls, it's perfect, fine. As long as the drivers are there and optimised. And I'm sure uh, Salvan will help us with that. I've followed his pinouts anyhow, so... And we have Amaranth working, which is cool. We've achieved quite a bit this evening. Pretty good. I think we've achieved our um, thingies. Our objectives. Uh, 
Um, was I going to cover anything else? What else have I done? I mean, yeah, we probably haven't got time now. But the, the next thing we need to do is things like get the VGA one working. That could be a bit of fun. VGA tile. Seven segment tile. Maybe you do the seven segment tile next because that's, you know, quite a good one. Oops, upside down. Look. We should probably get that one covered. Uh, at some point, we need to work out a way of doing the P mods, you know, using the P mod extender. I guess we could create the necessary resource. P mod. Laurie says, um, I think making it cheaper without the hyperam is a good idea. Yeah. I mean, there's no point burdening the cost if it's something that, that you don't need. Not only that, you can always get it afterwards, anyhow. You know, you can always add it on. And being able to add different sizes is also useful. Also, maybe, you know, some people might want uh, hyperflash. I have NMIGEN seven segment examples. Have you got them that work with this, though? Remember, this is a free segment with free uh, segment select lines, which is slightly different. But it's easy enough to do. I'm sure we'll be able to modify your example. Maybe we can do that. Um, maybe may, maybe that's a good exercise for next week. Because I want to do another stream before the end of the year. Um, maybe we can do the, you know, take your um, NMIGEN example and port it for Amaranth onto the uh, three digit tile that'd be a good little exercise next week i mean i want to i'm, I'm going to try and stream next week i don't know whether i'll be able to do it on wednesday because um well i mean i don't even know what the result of this COVID test is yet but we were going to go up and see folks i think on on monday and tuesday was the plan so I might be back by Wednesday but it may be Thursday so one day next week I'm gonna if possible do a stream so we could cover it then you've got one that works with a mix mod oh, okay seven mix mod very good well, I could take any one of these and port it. Yeah, simple enough, mate. Yeah, maybe we can do that next week. Be easy to port. And make it work on any tile. Which would be nice. Um, hmm. I don't like that I've got two Logic Deck board files. I'm going to have to sort that out. Um, Yeah, I'll have a think about that. Uh, 
I've got to think about the packaging, but eventually it needs to be um, added to a fork of amaranth boards. Um, I post this asking on Discord, will you have a, an HDMI tile? Uh, yes, we will. Um, I haven't got all the bits for that yet. When I get some parts. So, I mean, um, I've got the I've got some of the parts. I've got the um, the buffer chip, but I haven't got the connectors yet, and I haven't designed a PCB. Although that's quite easy. So that will happen in the new year sometime. Uh, I, I can probably pick up, get the HDMI connectors on the order for the first batch of boards. Oh, we do need to talk about the first batch of boards as well. My thinking, and we we'll talk a bit more next week, um, but I want to get a batch made, a special batch, the first batch, and they will be very different. They'll be unique um, to the regular shipping ones. So anyone that commits themselves to the first batch will get. Um, special versions and what I will probably do is do a like a bundled together kit so it will be the ice logic board and probably you know five tiles and one mezzanine but they will be different to the final shipping ones they will be unique um, the design won't change, but there will be a special element to it, and I'm working on what that element will be. They will be unique, like the first offs, the first people that, um, and I'm only going to make a relatively small quantity of those to begin with, uh, for people that commit to that. <laughs> those special versions come with bodges no that's not the point by that point we've got the design uh, the special won't be that they're bodged the special will be um, I've got a few ideas to my, how, how to make them unique compared to the shipping versions they will have some premium bits and bobs on them that you won't get with the normal shipping ones basically uh, and they will look slightly different. Um, I have a VGA example as well. It would be a good start, starting point for the VGA tile. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't mind working with the original ones when we do the ports. I'll have to dig my VGA monitor out as well. It's tucked behind this desk somewhere. It's a bit difficult to get out. Stash. <laughs> Where do you think you will be selling them? Um, the first batch I want to make available in January. I'm just trying to piece together all the various bits now. I've got all of the hard to get hold of bits now. Um... But I will have to order the new version of the PCB. But there's very there's very little changing on the PCB, um, really. Uh, I haven't finished testing the one I've got here yet. But everything I've tested so far works perfectly, apart from the LED. And I can't test that to put the LED on there. Um, I've got to shift a few things around a bit, like that connector, the debug connector, because it's too close to USB. Um, I'm also probably going to remove the um, JST connector because that's a pain in the ass. And I might change the uh, the DFU boot, sorry, the yeah the DFU boot button to a right angle one that points out, and that will sit where the old um, JST connector was. 
so there's some very minor changes happening but everything else is good and of course the hyper ram pins will go to the mezzanine but that, that's very close to where the chip is anyhow so that's relatively simple it's not that big a change to hyper ram because most of the pins are next to the mezzanine connector anyhow It also gives us flexibility if we have issues with those because all we have to do is change the mezzanine not the um, not the entire logic board oh, I post this the hyperam thing so the hyperam isn't going on the ice logic deck itself it goes on the mezzanine board uh, and the justification for that is um, not everybody wants a hyper ram so some people don't use the hyper ram so why why should they have to pay you know more for the board secondly um, we can do different sizes of hyper ram we could also do a different number of hyper ram chips on there you could also do combinations of hyper ram and hyper flash so it gives us more flexibility because the other issue is supplying the parts is quite tricky and it gives us the flexibility oh Laurie's Laurie saying on uh, um, on um, discord that he's gonna write some documentation on programming the board in Amaranth he spelled it wrong That'd be good, Laurie. If you can do that. So yeah, I mean January. I'm trying to work the dates out as we speak. I haven't made a final decision because I'm mo just modifying the PCBs, and I've got a few more tests that I want to run on my current board here that I haven't yet, you know, that I'm not satisfied with. All the tile stuff is good. I'm happy with that. Um, we need to test the LED obviously when those arrive those should arrive any up tomorrow which would be nice um, so what variation of hyper ram tiles yeah it takes a while I'm, I'm getting used to saying amaranth now to myself sorry it's starting to settle in not seem so odd um, I post uh, variation of hyper ram tiles well it's not the regular tiles it's the mezzanine tile um, the initial one I'll do will just have one hyper ram uh, 64 megabit hyper ram chip on it plus the LCD connector that will be the default one but later we could do all sorts you know you could have four of those chips on or you could have a 128 megabit version or you can combine you know hyper ram and hyper flash we've got enough pins on there to be able to choose i wonder why she renamed it is that sarcasm they've already started it's already started on twitter the comments about it i'm not going to mention the people that you know that supposedly trademarked the old name I wouldn't give them the publicity but I, I'm glad she renamed it it does take some getting used to but everyone will get used to it you know and everyone will commit to you know Amaranth and not the old one which will be good you know when I submit my board files it will be to Amaranth not to the old one Hyperam tile with HDMI and I2S would be nice. We can do that. 
Why do you want the I2S? Doesn't HDMI have digital audio anyhow? Does it lack quality or something? Um, what kind of connector do you use for I2S? Is there a standard um, connector for I2S? Well, we can do I2S. I2S only requires, is it three or four pins? I forget now. Hold on. Um, there are several chips for I2S input and audio output. Why, why do we need input and output chips? Can't the FPGA produce those signals directly? I'm fairly sure it can. It seems silly adding a chip for no purpose. What I'm more worried about is the right kind of connector. I mean, we can add some protection if that's required. I don't know. So when you're connecting from one I2S source to another I2S input or whatever, what kind of connector would you normally use? The I2S connector was not intended to be used via cables and most integrated circuits will not have the correct impedance for coaxial cables as the impedance adaption error associated with the different line lengths can cause differences in propagation delay between the clock line and data line this can result in a synchronization problem between the SCK, WS and data signals Main at high sampling frequencies of bit rate. As I2S bus does not have any error detection mechanism, this can cause significant decoding errors. There is no standard interconnecting cable for this application. Some manufacturers simply provide free BNC connectors. Well, there's no no way we're going to use free BNC connectors. That would be huge. Or, oh, you can use an RJ45 socket. Again, that's not particularly convenient. A D9 connector. What the fuck is a D9? Others like Audio Alchemy, now defunct, use DIN connectors. PS Audio, Musical Piscina, Wildful Sound, use HDMI connector. Some people do it over RCA connectors. Is there anything small that we can do it on? Uh, what you've got to think of, iPost, is if it's next to the HDMI connector. Um, let me show you this, for example. This is what a VGA with audio looks like. And you can just about fit that in with the tile scheme.
Yeah, so you've got a VGA and then you've got the audio connector. Focus on the on the right or left. So there's not much room. Now the HDMI connector is probably not quite as wide as the uh, VGA because it doesn't have the screw, doesn't need the screw-ins on the side. So you've got a bit more room, but you need something small to fit. Are you with me? So it needs to be something that people could use to pick the signal up. Um, Um, so what's Digilance? Have you got a link for Digilance? Um, P mod, hold on. What connector do they use on the Digilant one? So they're just using audio connectors. But that's input and output, and we just need output, right? How many signals do you need? Four signals, is it, for I2S? Hold on. Uh, Oh, you only need three signals because they multiplex the left and right alternately for each word select. So you've got a clock, word select, and data, serial data. Yeah, so that's not a problem. So we could put that through an audio connector. You only need a stereo audio connector. Um, you probably want to put you, the impedance wise the audio things are like 75 ohms so what you probably do is put some serial resistors on the tile connector side of the tile um, probably like a 50 ohm that would add to the you know 25 ohm output impedance that will give you a 75 ohm output impedance which is what you normally see I think on the um, on these uh, audio type connectors so that will work so that shouldn't be an issue doing that all that is is I just take the free the free um, three of the IO signals out we've got 12 anyhow so you need eight for HDMI you need four pairs so that's eight pins um, plus you need three for the audio so that's 11 and we've got 12 pins it's fine um, you can also use one to detect the HDMI or you can use STM pins for that if you want as well. So that would work. And I think you could get one of those 3.5 jacks. I could use the same jacks I'm using here. These ones. They're not... Um,
Same jacks, which would be useful. Now these ones, now them. Da, 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 da. I could use the same jacks. Sorry, let me put the mic back on. I don't want to hear me. These ones. So these are just like stereo jacks. Uh, a sheet of paper. These. You see, very simple. Surface. Surface. Uh, these aren't. These are through hole ones, but I can get surface mount versions of these. And that will sit next to the uh, HDMI. They're very small, but standard audio jacks. That will probably do the trick. I think. <laughs> Excuse me for a sec, folks. I'm being pinged to death. Right. Yeah, so Laurie's saying uh, most people don't use the... Um, he was surprised that most people don't use the memory. Most people don't. It's actually worse than that. Lots of people that buy these boards don't ever use them. They put them in their drawers. But then we're all guilty of that, right? Or they sit in the drawers for a long time before they use them. But, um, yeah, what most people do doesn't necessarily need that kind of memory. It depends what people are doing. Most people don't work on significant product um, projects. Sorry. A lot of them are just using this stuff to learn. And when they get to the memory bit, it's like, ooh, that's frightening. So they quite often don't bother. Very few people make it to that stage, particularly with Verilog. I mean, it's easier. When you've got things like Litex and that, it's, it's an entirely different equation. Does Litex support HyperRAM? I can't remember whether it does or not.
Hmm. Oh, it does support hyperam. That's good. Yeah, the big problem with memory is going to be when we do the ECP5 version. Because I'm probably going to have to write the DDR2 implementation, which I am not looking forward to. And it's one of the things that puts me off doing it quickly, because I know I need to write that bit. Oh, crazy. Luna has Nemmigen version of the Hyperam. Yeah, I saw that, but I've, I've no idea how well it works or not. Or how optimized it might be. Because there's, you know, Hyperam support, and then there's optimized for the platform Hyperam support. Um, as in Sylvan optimized. <laughs> where he cherry picks the pins which he did for us which is nice hopefully that will result in reasonable performance um yeah Well, the other things I got is I got some more headers which are slightly larger, a mil larger, slight adjustment. Um, the other thing I got were these. Look at the size of these buggers. These are real chonkers to use an esdemism. Um, he's making bloody packet now. These are for the uh, motorboard, so I can actually um, get the motorboard made up as well. In the new year i'm looking forward to that and then we can revisit all the uh motor support look at these puppies man chonkers look at the size of these buggers these are massive these are the freeway right angled headers Difficult to get a good angle on these. You see what I mean about three weight? They're just massive. I mean, look at that. I mean, these will be cut down lengthwise, obviously, because we don't need them as long as that. They're just huge. They're particularly huge when you've been dealing with the 1.27 pins. Ah, oh, twinkles. You come back to finish your supper. Hungry cat. They're just chonkers, man. Look at that. Friggin' huge. Anyhow, so I'm glad those arrived. That's going to be fun. But we've got plenty to do on the stream with all these new um, tiles. Plenty to do. And I've got some more terminal connectors as well for the motors. That's arrived. Pretty much everything's arrived. The only thing I'm really slightly short on are the inductors for the switch mode, which I'm having a real problem getting, which is doing my head in. But I've got enough for the first batch. So we're okay for that. It's for the subsequent batches. Uh, but that's going to be a problem. Um, so, yeah, that's all in hand. Um, I'll be pleased to get these new LEDs. You want to say hello, Twinks? Hello, Twinkles. Hello, folks. You want to be picked up. You want to go through the door, don't you? You want to go through the door? In or out? 
Give me one. Alright. Um. Perhaps Litex doesn't support it, but Greg Deville has an implementation. It's for the ESP5. Oh yeah, he 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 has it on the um, Orange Crab, doesn't he? He uses um, Hyperam, if I remember rightly. Oh, I'm trying to set the price, Laurie, at the moment. It's tricky. It's not cheap, I'm afraid, because it's just really difficult to get anything right now, and we're having to pay over the odds for everything. Orange Crab uses DDR3. Oh, my mistake. For some reason, I thought he was using Hyperam. I could be wrong. Yeah. I, I want the uh, the uh, logic deck, the ice logic deck, to be less than a hundred pounds, but it won't be much less, unfortunately. We are in a different world now, pricing-wise, when it comes to sourcing, you know, microcontrollers and FPGAs, it's just an entirely different world. You just have to pay what you can get for them, because, you know, it's like these extra uh, Ice Logic, um, Ice 40 HXs, you know. They've been sold out for ages and ages and ages. And then suddenly, I mean, I check literally almost every other day. Uh, and every now and then some pop up. Which is what happened the other day, which is why I've managed to get, well, more than I originally thought, which is nice. Which means I'll be able to make more, more boards in total. I'm not sure that the Ice Logic board is the ideal board if you just want to play. I mean that you know we've got things like the Ice Court, sorry, the Black Ice MX for that. That's probably better for that sort of purpose. I think the uh, the Logic Deck range of boards that we're planning you know uh, are aimed slightly above that <coughs> in terms of usage I don't think these are the sort of things that you want to shove in your drawer and not ever use I think if you're gonna you know go down this route then um, you know you probably want to use the thing that you've bought Yeah, and that's the other point is what I didn't want to do is do something and then not be able to ship it. That's really important. It's a bit annoying, really. 
you know, I've ordered both Glasgow and Luna, and we're not going to see those for a long time. So <sighs> that's the problem with going the crowdsource route when you've got supply problems like this. You know, I did think about going the crowdsource route, but what worries me is what happens if it goes so well that people want more and I can't get all the parts and then everything gets delayed. You know, I'd rather kind of just make them in batches and sell them, you know, and then ramp it up, start with a small batch, then a large batch, etc., etc., knowing that I can actually supply the parts, you know, rather than do it the other way around in this day and age. I think delivering is really important. Um, that's kind of what's always worried me about the crowd supply route, if you see what I mean. There's always high risk. I mean, you, you may be able to do... Uh, you know, a nice logic deck. I was thinking of maybe doing a Edinburgh tile or Edinburgh tiles so that you could do similar things that you did for Glasgow just for my own purposes because it would be handy because I know I'm not going to see Glasgow for, you know, a long time. Because um, that's quite simply all you do for the tile is you add, um, you know, um, level shifting I mean if you only want it to be 3 volt you don't even need the level shifting but some sort of protection uh, and maybe some impedance matching very easy to do Yeah, I definitely, um, Laurie says on the Discord that uh, the logic analyzer type application is another good uh, for logic deck. I definitely want to do something like an Edinburgh tile. But you could do all sorts of various ones. Not only could you do, you know, the implementations in Amaranth, just like you would on a Glasgow, but also... You could provide the right connectors on the tile suitable. So if you did a PS2 tile, um, not only would you do the logic, but you could actually put PS2 connectors on the on the tile as well. Uh, to do an oscilloscope application, you could have a fast A to D line. Sorry, A to D tile. Yeah, that's relatively easy. I think I've got some fast um, ADCs in my drawer somewhere. Some analog device ones. I don't know how fast. Yeah, the STM32 ADC I think is up to... If you interleave them, you can go up to about 7... Megabits per second, sorry, megabytes per second. 12 bit, mm -hmm. um, but that's you can go any higher than that. And I think if they're not interleaved, I think the maximum is like five uh, mega, mega samples per second. It's actually 12 bits, so it's not megabytes per second, it's uh, 12 bits. Uh, five mega samples per second. SDR tiles are completely possible.
Well, the tile just needs to have the RF stuff on it. SDR is quite a uh, specialist market, but if someone that knew what they were doing on the SDR side designed a tile, you know, all the all the digital bits are done. They just need to do the um, the RF side. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of tiles that can be done. You know, we've only, we haven't really touched a, we haven't really gotten anywhere into what's possible with the tiles. Um, there's a lot we could do, and there's lots of mechanical advantages to them. Um, that we need to explore as well. Uh, spam on the um but i'm going to close down the stream now but I'm, I, I will continue on discord guys so i will stream next week in between christmas and new year that's the plan assuming i am you know still good um I, i'll aim to stream on wednesday but it may be thursday but i'll let you guys know but thank you for joining me uh the conversation will continue down on discord if you want to join us um and we'll see you then Ciao.